Hi again, folks. I'm Dan Dyker. Welcome into Seven Rivers Racing here on KQEG TV. Al Osi joins me again as the show just keeps going on with <laughs> guest after guest and more exciting racing from Western Wisconsin. And you got your money's worth if you went to Lacrosse Fairground Speedway on it's Saturday night. The weather was just picture perfect. A little bit of a breeze. Watch the sunset go down in turn three. And we're going to jump right into it with. Uh, we weren't even starting racing yet. The green flag dropped on the very first hot lap. And Jay Herbst, man, again, had to jump into his backup car. And we're going to show you some pictures of what that looked like when he slapped the turn two wall and thousands of dollars in damage to his car. Oh, it was a big hit that he took. And it was only one or two laps, as you mentioned, into the practice. And I'm surprised he didn't warm his tires up. I don't know if there were marbles on the uh, in the racing lane or what, because it was just really early in practice for something like that to happen. Well, Herbst again for the second time this year had to jump into a backup car. He did finish with a top five, so he remains only two points behind Sean Paff as uh, those two got into a tangle again, which we're going to talk about here in just a couple of moments. What a night for the uh, Quick Trip NASCAR late model feature event, Troy Rave. I could hear it in the announcer's booth, the <laughs> slow chug, chug, chug of his motor as he headed down the front straightaway with five laps to go. Uh, he had a pretty commanding lead pretty much through the entire race once he got out. Uh, about the halfway mark. He had a pretty good lead going on. And the biggest battle was Todd Korsh and Matt Henderson. We're going to show you that battle right here. Look at those two. It looked like they were chained together. It sure did. As Troy Reeve gets out to a lead, but with five laps to go, I'm not sure if he blew a cylinder or what the deal was. And if there'd have been a couple of laps left, Korsh, Henderson, or Brad Powell, who we're going to talk about, would have won that race. Oh, very definitely. And I got to give Troy Rave credit because at that point in time, you can panic because you hear every every noise when, when you're leading a race that close to the end. And he really, I don't know if he babied the car or what he did, but he kept that thing in one piece because it could have blown. Your call closest was getting right here. Now, this is right towards the end of the race. And I know Troy said he was just white knuckling the steering wheel until that checkered flag came out. And again, with a couple of laps to go, and the lap cars that were coming up on, as Jay Herbst also made it a part of the bunch right there, Matt Henderson thought about going to the inside. And I talked to Matt afterwards, and I, and I read the article in the Lacrosse Tribune this week, and Matt and Todd Korsh had some fantastic comments. They're good friends, they have almost pit next to each other, and they respect each other as drivers. Either driver could have done some damage to the other car to make sure that either one's out of the way or one's getting out of the way, but they didn't do it. Matt took a look right there and into turn two, brought it back, and they finished two and three. And I have to give hats off to not only Troy Rave, but Todd Korsh running a good race, Matt Henderson. That was probably one of the, the strongest races I've watched him race when you talk about running a guy like mm -hmm. Todd Korsh. And then you've got um, Jay Herbst is in his backup car, and Brad Powell right. made that a very interesting finale. Oh, it very definitely did, and that's a fine example of intelligent driving. Anybody could have bumped somebody a little too hard. You're so excited. You're getting close to the end of the race. You can smell the, the oil of the motor who's in the lead Korsh, going away. Of course, the newspaper yes. said he could smell oil the closer he got to Troy Rave, and he knew that motor was going out. And, and w w by being intelligent inside the race car, they end up not only having good finishes, they get good points nights, and right. that's the big picture is the points nights for those guys. A couple of things we do want to mention here. Brad Powell, first time out in 2011, had a qualifying time of 19.727, the fastest of the year. Finished fourth, started in the back, finished fourth, and I'll tell you what, with five more laps on in that race, Brad Powell wins that race. Nothing against Todd Korsh, nothing against Matt Henderson or Jay Herbst. Brad Powell obviously would have won that race, but that brings us to an interesting point that a lot of people may not realize. That's what four brand new tires does. And explain to us now, why does Brad Powell get the advantage of the new tires? Having brand new rubber, what he does is... Uh Early in practice, what he'll do is scuff the tires. Then he's probably not going to do much because your very best rubber is probably going to start around lap 8 or 10 with those tires. And the amount of grip, especially with the way the weather was, the track wasn't hot, but it was a nice overcast that kept the track a little cool. And so there were no uh, oils flowing from the, the track or from the, the tires, and it really gives good grip, which 
allows him a little bit more motor, it allows him a little bit more gearing, uh, and, and getting off the corner, he can just lay to the pedal down. So why does Brad Powell get four new tires? Was it because this is his first time at the track this year? Yes, uh, at the beginning of the year, you get four new tires. He could have had the option of using three tires from last year, but that would have put him in a bad situation in three weeks. Uh, so what, what he did was he chose the option of getting four new tires and starting in the back. And it really is a disadvantage, as you can see, four new tires. If he had four new tires starting in the top ten, he'd have blown the track yeah, away. Yeah, we, 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 we would have had a whole different piece yeah. of video there and, to show the end of that race. And so that's a good indication that the track takes care of things and says you got to start in the back. Now, he has to do it two more times. Well, obviously, with one race in on those tires, I think he may have an advantage <laughs> in two weeks as we've got Smash Arama coming up this yes. week. Another interesting point, Sean Paff and Jay Herbs tangling up again. This has been uh, a very contentious situation um, in the past couple of weeks to the point where General Manager Chuck Deary addressed the drivers meeting himself this week. I wasn't down there, but you were, and Chuck had addressed this before another incident happened. Yeah, and it was it was a good meeting for everybody, not just those two, because right. things were getting a little rough out there uh, with some people. And sometimes management has to sit down and say, okay, we need to back things off. Let's make this fun again. Let's make the crowd enjoy the racing end of things and not spend a whole lot of money during the week fixing your cars and the track did a good job they made sure that people knew that it was no nonsense with, right. with what they were saying all right we're going to take a break here in just a couple of seconds when we come back we're going to show you what happened in the sportsman and thunderstock features what a night we had this past weekend two former rookies of the year back to uh, both from last year get wins a point leader comes from the back to the front to win and again the two top in the late model points Get involved in another melee in turn two. Both ended up surviving and Sean Papp and two-point lead. We're going to talk Sportsman Thunderstock. Two guests in the program today. That's coming up next. Al Losey, Dan Dyker on the Seven Rivers Racing Show here in KQEG-TV.